What is going on, YouTube people? Neo Cards of Comics here for the Eclipse edition of the weekly sports card market update. We are a day late, not a dollar short, due to travel back from the Chantilly show. Boy, oh boy, do I have a... That's nah, not that doozy, but uh, <laughs> there was uh, some travel hiccups getting home from the Chantilly show uh, on Sunday. I will expound upon those in a little i have i'll probably have two chantilly videos out uh one little vlog style you know just little the little snippets kind of like i did for the ship show nothing super crazy and then i'm gonna do probably a separate like let's just kind of talk about things because i definitely have some thoughts coming out of the chantilly show uh i'll, I'll give a very a brief overview here I'll, I'll save the super juicy bits um not a lot of action for me at all. Show was busy, uh, especially Saturday, foot traffic wise. Friday, foot traffic was lighter, but everyone said it was busy for a Friday, but it was very easy to get around in there. All the dealers that I talked to said it was their best Friday show ever. Ever at Chantilly, or at least in years, since like the early days of the pandemic when stuff was super crazy. But everyone I talked to said they had great Fridays. However, that's the dealers. Uh, I don't know that a lot of buyers did. I'll be, fire away, if you were at the Chantilly show this weekend, fire away your thoughts, opinions, what you thought, what you bought, what you didn't buy in the comments down below. Like I said, this is just a little little appetizer because um, this kind of this deserves its own full flush out video. I don't want to derail things here. I had a great time. Venue, this is my first time there. Venue was nice. Um, you know, show setup was great. All, the area was fantastic. Plenty of places to eat, plenty of hotels. Uh, the travel there wasn't bad. Travel home, a little bit of a different story. I would go again if I was in the area for something else. That's how I'll, I'll I'll frame that, and we'll kind of leave it at that. If I was saying, "Hey, let, let's let's take a weekend trip to D.C. and also hit the Chantilly show and and do the city for a few days or wrap it into something else," I would go again. I don't know that I would go again just for the show, or if I was, I would approach it differently. So, more thoughts on the Chantilly show? Probably two separate videos dropping on that. Um, hopefully, Tuesday and Wednesday. Once again, sorry for putting this out a day later. This video is um, the most labor intensive and it is not fun to record on the road. So that's why I pushed it back a day. Uh, I am in the path of total totality with the with the solar eclipse today. So if you never hear from me again, I got, I'm, I'm gone. I just, the solar eclipse ate me alive. Uh, if you look at the internet, the whole world is gonna end when the eclipse happens, even though these happen all the time around the world and the rest of the world is fine. Depending on when you are listening to this, I may be swept away into the darkness. Before we get too far in, got to give a shout out to channel partner, Com C, sponsor of the weekly sports card market update. I have three cards on the way home from Com C. I shipped home the Stroud Silver Prism. I shipped home a Jamar Chase Orange Prism PSA 9. Would have been nice to have the CJ Stroud uh, for trade bait this weekend. Actually, well, <laughs> wouldn't have mattered. Uh, Talk more about that. And then uh, I picked up a really cool PC card that I will not spoil here. I spoiled it on. If you follow me on Twitter uh, or you follow, you look at the community page on YouTube, you will see what I am talking about. But I will save it for a video to do a full reveal. Very, very excited about that card. And, you know, that's what I like to do with the ComC stuff that I send in. You know, you, you see the boxes of stuff go out. And then rather than cashing out, I like to use that money to either A, buy good cards for trade bait, like specifically for the national, that's what I'm looking for on there, or B, pick up really cool PC stuff. That's that's what I do. I take those box, those long boxes of cards that I send in, sell it, and then turn it into the cards that I want to use as ammunition for trades, or maybe potentially sell, but usually for trades, and then pick up cool stuff for the PC. So if you're not using ComC, go check them out with a mail day coming very, very soon from them. 
I have the CSA show stuff up here. We kind of talked about that already in the open, uh, so we can move past that. My next travel show will probably be maybe Ship Shawana, maybe. That's a Monday show. Those are always tough for me. Uh, beyond that, I'm not booked for it yet, but I'm about as confirmed as you could possibly get. Uh, Heroes Con, uh, Comic Con down in Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, absolutely love going to that show. I am hoping to attend again. It is looking good for that, but it is just not finalized. And then June, the next thing you know, it'll be the national. So my next big card show travel wise would potentially be ships. Uh, if I can make it, we'll see if I can or not. The Monday shows are always a little bit tricky. Uh, one of the bigger stories of the week, 2024 Bowman baseball pre-orders came out this week and people are Big, mad about the prices. Jumbos were up for five hundred a box. Hobby boxes for two sixty. I do not remember what these were last year. I think, and if someone knows for sure, they can correct me in the comments below. I think hobby boxes on pre order were a little over two hundred. Someone can correct me if I'm wrong, or right around two hundred. And jumbos, I feel like were low. For fours i feel like i paid 425 for mine because i bought four three of them last year uh this time around i bought three or i'm sorry two jumbos so three autographs per box i do not like the one autograph per box hobby box uh that just scares the heck out of me with only one auto in there i am not a prospect hound or guru I've heard mixed reviews on the checklist, just like most things in life. Some people say it's absolutely fantastic. Some people say it's absolutely garbage. And some people say it's perfectly fine. If you have a hot take on the 2024 Bowman checklist, feel free to fire away down below. I do not mind the design. Uh, they put some preview images up. Uh, I don't mind it. I think it looks pretty decent. It'll be very easy to tell centering on these things, which is nice. Sometimes Bowman can be a little bit tricky. This comes out in early May. I do not know if I will get any more beyond the two jumbos. I will probably rip both of those. I don't know that I see myself sitting on any of this. Probably do one live, one on a recorded video, and we will see what happens from there. May Last year, I ripped like a bunch of Bowman blasters and that sort of stuff. We'll just have to see what I get myself into. Did you pre-order this? Like I said, people were fired up about the price increases on this. But, but we could complain about the price increases. It sold out within about, mm, I think, an hour. I think it lasted about an hour uh, and they were gone. Especially the jumbos went first and then the hobby boxes followed shortly thereafter. I may keep the powder dry for Sapphire uh, because if Bowman's coming out, that means we'll get Bowman Sapphire shortly thereafter. And I love myself some fat Sapphire products. Love it. So, that's what I ended up doing. Curious for what you all decided to chase. Uh, the other big thing this week was, <laughs> I hold on to your seats, Beckett was in the news twice. Uh, Beckett came out with two very SGC style videos, uh, which once again, good on them. You know, I, I, I could sit here and criticize them or, you know, make fun of them for trying to go SGC Pete. But listen, this is what we've been begging for. Communication out of Beckett. I will take what we can get. Uh, the first one was from Luke Miller, their new director of grading or head director of grading or whatever his title is. Uh, basically an announcement about upcoming announcements. Now, they didn't mess around. Uh, like a day or two later, uh, the head grader came out and said, grading scale is not changing. Discussed it in yesterday's video, so I'm not going to go too far down that rabbit hole today. Uh, I don't agree with the decision. I do like the fact that they actually came out and said what they were doing. So overall, I will take that as a win in Beckett's column. Just the fact that they are talking again. They have a lot of in infrastructure issues they need to fix. Uh, one thing I will kind of chat about here. A lot of people in the comments were like, you know, uh, Fanatics should make a play for them. You know, this, that, the other thing. The problem is, and this is where things get sticky. One, I believe, I believe, not 100% sure on this, the owner is in jail. So that sort of complicates things. They are part of a larger investment situation. 
And the other problem is, is if you're going to buy Beckett, if Fanatics, if, now listen, Ruben can write a check for anything that he wants. So if he really wants Beckett, he could go have himself a Beckett. If he wants to cut the check for it. The problem is, is that people would want Beckett grading. They wouldn't want all the other Beckett nonsense. And Beckett is going to, if they're going to, whoever owns the, the conglomerate that owns them is going to want to sell the whole thing at once and not deal with piecing it out most likely is someone that's in the market for it, willing to take on the whole kit and caboodle and potentially deal with the side effects of the other businesses. You know, let's, let's, we'll use fanatics as an example. Does fanatics want to get in the comic book grading? Now, CBCS is one of their more successful side ventures. Uh, they dwarf CGC. CGC is a massive player in the space, but CBCS does okay ish. Uh, they are very, very much, much like Beckett, kind of a niche grader for people. Uh, but I think they do okay. Uh, they have VHS, they have the online price guide, they have a, a vault, they have a data management tool, they have a pricing tool. They have all this other stuff that I don't know that someone looking to acquire them wants. Someone looking to acquire them is just going to want the grading company and not all the other nonsense. And that's where things get tangled. You know, is Beckett willing to sell off just grading or is whoever's buying them willing to take on the whole hot mess? Or do they just want the grading company? That's what we don't know. And that's why a lot of people in the know or in the in the industry say it would be very difficult for Beckett to sell. I didn't pull up a slide for it, but the golden X eBay rumors are going around strongly. Again, uh, Eric Whitebach, the collectible guru, uh, who is no longer that person anymore. That account has been sold to a couple different people. Now run that account. It is not the same person running it anymore. They put out a tweet Saturday, basically saying sources say, eBay is is acquiring Golden. Now, that has been the worst kept secret in the hobby for a couple of weeks, at least. Uh, it has been talked about, bantied around. The problem is no one, well, I shouldn't say no one, maybe uh, that account ended up confirming it. No one's been able to get firm, firm confirmation on it. My guess is, because Ravel was teasing stuff a couple of weeks ago, it could have been collect. But I have a feeling their new collect thing launches this week. Wouldn't it be something? I would not be surprised. I would not be surprised if their first big story out of the gate is collectors selling off Golden to eBay. Because once again, this has been talked about in circles for weeks. None of us small fish have been able to officially confirm it that it's 100% happening, which is very difficult to do. But I would not be surprised if Ravel has it cold and they use that as their first big story and that's why everyone's being quiet on it. That's just pure speculation on my part. I would not be surprised. Collect does launch this week. I will be very interested to see what they have. I don't know if I'll do a video or anything on it at the end of the week but I am very curious to see how that site, what it looks like and what sort of stuff they end up covering. With that, let's move in to charts and graphs powered by Market Movers. If you wanna play around with your own charts and graphs, there is a link in the description down below. You can go ahead and check that out. Free trial and get 20% off for life with the old coupon code. If you don't want it, you don't have to use it. It's all good. First up, football. We had a big football trade this week. Uh, Stefan Diggs went to the Texans uh, for a bunch of picks. Nothing crazy. Uh, and, you know, was it actually a big trade? That's kind of been the talk of the week. Like, Diggs is a big name. Uh, I know I had him in fantasy last year, and he was good the first few weeks, and then he sucked. Uh, he was not very good, and they also already have two very, very good wide receivers. However, the news did move the needle. We discussed this uh, in a video the middle of last week, uh, but we've had some more movement since then. The, as I mentioned in that video, Stroud prices were actually dipping a little bit as things kind of slowed down. People weren't talking about him as much. We kind of moved into the off season. Baseball season was starting. The NBA playoffs are coming around. And then things kind of got juiced back up. Right now he's sitting 
right at about a thousand dollars. Some sales have clipped over that, like the 1050 range, uh, but they basically been going between 950 and a thousand ish. They were down all the way to about 800 high sevens. So they spur uh, spiked back up off the back of this trade. Uh, we will see if they can actually hold at around that thousand dollar mark or if they end up pulling back again a little bit. Still a long way to go to the national. I do think he will be one of the more popular players there. Checking in on the rest of the 2023 class just for the hell of it while we're here. This is over the last 30 days. Stroud's up about 10%. Uh, that would look a lot bigger if I shortened it up to the last seven or 14 days. Uh, Anthony Richardson down about 6%, still sitting at around that $400 mark. Will Levis up about 7%. And Bryce Young down about 12% as his team uh, just looks like it's an absolute shambles. Uh, I'm I'm a big, I shouldn't say a big fan. I'm intrigued by Anthony Richardson. I will tell you, walking around the Chantilly show, he was one of the players that I was air quotes looking for and could find none of him, or at least none of the stuff that I was looking for on AR-15. Uh, most of the stuff that was on the show floor uh, was very, very low end or very, 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 very high end, like three, four thousand dollar prism parallels. Uh, that was not stuff that I was looking for. Uh, Will Levis sitting there at 200. He's an intriguing one as well, just because of the price point. And if he did anything at all, his stuff could potentially spike. I don't know that I believe in the talent that much, but what the hell do I know? I am a guy sitting in a basement looking at charts and graphs on a computer screen. On the opposite side of that trade, Stefan Diggs. Uh, over the last 60 days, this is over the last 60 because this stuff does not sell that often because it is pretty low population, uh, did spike up. Uh, his base tops chrome refractor up a little bit. Prism base up quite a bit. Purple refractor, a little color match action up quite a bit. I will say, though, you know, this is over the last 60 days. If I bounce this back into season or towards the tail end of the season, into the playoffs, uh, he's about flat. His stuff actually dipped down pretty hard to start the beginning of the offseason and then came back up to where it left off. So fun with starting and end points on this stuff. So always kind of keep that in mind. But if you manage to scoop up some deals on him after the Bills got eliminated, uh, you're probably doing pretty okay on his stuff. Once again, I'm not necessarily a believer. I think he is a fine wide receiver. I don't know that he's worth the $30 million price tag. Um, I kind of like Tank Dell and Nico Collins a little bit better. This feels like more name value than actual on-field value. I'm sure he'll be perfectly fine. Uh, I just don't know that he's going to put up monster, monster numbers. It'll be interesting to see how those guys shake out from a fantasy football perspective. Next up, basketball. And Bean's back. Uh, and he looks okay. Actually, a little winded. I, I watched uh, his first game back, and he looked gassed by the end of it, which is to be expected. But good to see him be back. Listen, as a Cavs fan, uh, and the Cavs are on the struggle bus right now with Donovan Mitchell fighting through a knee injury, and they just have not looked right since the All-Star break as a team. Uh, and be back on the Sixers, if the Cavs end up in the three seed, I want no part of the Sixers as a six seed if they end up pulling it off. No part of them. Uh, they scare the hell out of me, especially with Embiid coming back now, giving them a little bit of ramp up before the playoffs actually start, not having to come back cold. Uh, his card prices did spike up a little bit. Now, small sample size alert here. Uh, not many sales. This is pretty low pop, but his PSA 10 is up about 30% uh, from where it was. This is over the last 30 days. Prior to this one, and not sold for a hot minute. Some other guys kind of heading into the playoffs, getting a little bit of hype. Anthony Edwards. I'm actually surprised this stuff up isn't up a little bit more. I actually saw on the Tim Bontemp straw poll that he actually got a couple low-end MVP votes. Not that he has any chance to win it at all, uh, but he is having a really nice season. And he is very entertaining to watch and listen to. Great interview. His stuff not moving up much at all, and they may end up being the one seed. We'll have to see how that shakes out. Uh, Paolo Bancaro, another team that my Cavs may end up playing. I would much rather see the Magic than the 76ers. His stuff up a decent chunk, uh, almost 40%, as they kind of close out this run to the NBA playoffs. A lot of guys are going to start getting decimated in prices, I have a feeling. Um, your people that don't look 
quite as secure in their playoff standing. I've already seen, you know, Jalen Green got some run up. His stuff's probably going to be dipping back down as they've kind of lost their playoff spot. Uh, you know, the Kings guys, they're playing, eh. They lost some guys to injuries. They're probably not going to make a deep playoff run or maybe not even make it into the official playoffs, depending on how that shakes out. Fox stuff could take a little bit of a hit. Guys like that are ones to keep your eye on if you are looking to air quote, you know, buy the offseason dip, if you will. And then as obviously as teams get eliminated and bounced, uh, things will get a little bit crazy with their for their prices. The one I am curious to watch on, and I am self-interested because I have the green prism. Uh, you know, what is what happens with the Celtics and Tatum this year? They are basically expected to win the NBA championship, either them or Denver. What happens if they don't? Do people finally say enough is enough with Tatum and just say, you know, forget this guy? And does he take a pretty big price hit? I think it'll probably depend on how they exit the playoffs if they don't win at all. But those are some of the things that I'm starting to kind of wrap my mind around that I want to keep an eye on as we get ready to head into the NBA playoffs. Caitlin Clark, I just got done watching this game, has been eliminated. She was not able to defeat South Carolina. That South Carolina team looked good. I do not watch a lot of women's college basketball outside the last couple of weeks, uh, but that South Carolina team looked like absolute monsters. Uh, Clark came out firing, but was unable to sustain it. I'm not necessarily particularly interested in any of her cards or specifically, this is just the PSA 10 base Bowman. I am more from a scientific perspective, curious to see how her prices hold up now that the NCAA tournament is over. I expect them to dip. I don't know how much. And then, you know, the NBA or the WNBA draft is just in like a week or two. I think it's like next week that comes around quick. You know, how does card prices, how much is she still front of mind in the WNBA? I think these are all very intriguing things to watch. I get it. A lot of the comment section absolutely hates women's sports. Like it or not, she brought a lot of people into the card space. I saw a lot of girls at my local show, a lot of moms with daughters walking around looking for Caitlin Clark cards over the last few months. And in some of the shows that I was at, she was the hottest name on the show floor in regards for what people were looking for. Her being successful and kind of creating a new generation of collectors, like it or not, is a win. It will be, be very curious to watch how her prices move as she now is no longer on that Iowa team and moves into the Indiana Fever, I believe, of the number one pick in the WNBA draft and how that goes from there. I would not be shocked to see her in the NBA three-point contest next year going against Steph Curry or whoever and that like they did this past year. They'd be crazy not to do that. The ratings on that alone would be through the roof. Next up, baseball. The season is well underway. We are about a week and a half in. My fantasy teams are eh, eh. I'm in two, uh, one in a Discord league with uh, Dakota and a bunch of those guys. And then I did one NFBC satellite league. I always say I'm not going to do the NFBC. And then I FOMO into it at the last minute and join a league. And I did the exact same thing this year. So far, yeah. Pitching injuries suck. Spencer Strider, done for the season. Shane Bieber, done for the season. Yuri Perez, done for the season. This is why people do not invest in starting pitching cards. It sucks. It should be fun. I would love to chase, you know, some Paul Skeens cards or something like that. I learned my lesson when I was a kid uh, watching Kerry Wood and Mark Pryor. Learned the hard way on that, uh, chasing their stuff. Speaking of chasing stuff, let's talk about some prospects that have, well, a little bit of everybody, some prospects and some established the thing that I am most interested in watching right now are the prospects that did not make teams. I am looking at you, Spencer Jones. Uh, over the last 30 days, he is down 26%. Remember when he was the hottest thing in the world? Well, he was really close to making the MLB roster because they just don't have any space for him. So he got sent down. I'm interested to see where his price is. You know, where do those settle out at? That's someone that I wouldn't mind buying back in on. 
Uh, Anthony Volpe, off to a very hot start. His car prices are basically flat. Kind of what I wanted to look at here is guys that got sent down, guys that had a lot of preseason hype, and guys that have started the season strong. Uh, Jackson Chorio, a lot of hype in the offseason. He's been fine to start the season, but the hype's already starting to come off. He is down 25%. Jackson Holiday ended up getting sent down. He's on fire in AAA last I looked. His cards have stayed flat. Two established stars, Mike Trout, off to a tremendous start. You could not ask for a better start out of Trout. He is basically flat, down 3%. And then, really, who we should have been buying this whole entire time? One, Mr. Mookie Betts. Tremendous start to the season. Amazing player. His 2014 first Bowman is up 33% just over the last couple of weeks. Uh, there's only a couple of sales on these because these just do not sell very often. Very low pop on a PSA 10, only 196 of them. But just buy the modern goats rather than chasing the kids. Last but not least, before we walk, wrap up, just a quick check in on one Mr. Connor Bedard. Remember when everyone was chasing his stuff? PSA 10s down to about 1.3K. Raw down to about 440 bucks. PSA 9s sitting at about 500. I'm actually surprised PSA 9s are outselling Raw. Usually it's the other way around, as crazy as that sounds. Uh, but as of right now, the 9s are actually outperforming the Raw, though that line graph is getting closer and closer. Don't be shocked to see those two flip spots at some point in time. Uh, I would expect this card to still continue to trend down a little bit. Uh, probably will start to level out here pretty quick uh, as the masses continue to pile back from PSA. Uh, I don't know where it ends up settling completely. I am not a hockey guy. I wouldn't be surprised if maybe it hangs around 1,000, maybe even a little bit under that. But I do still think this has some room to go down. If you truly want a Bedard card, there is no reason to rush into this. Be patient. Don't FOMO. I know it's hard. I know. I know. Take a breath. Trust me. Take a breath. Worked real well for me today. Once again, talk more about that on the Chantilly show. Uh, just take it easy. Wait it out. There's going to be a billion of these things in PSA 10 slabs. You'll be able to find one. There's no reason to rush into this card. Unless you just absolutely have to have it. And listen, I get it. I get it. FOMO gets the best of us all sometimes. All I got for you, boys and girls, uh, look forward to Chantilly stuff this upcoming week, recapping that stuff. And then, as always, any news and craziness. And I got a couple other little uh, fun videos planned. Picked up a grail, what I am classifying as a grail. I don't know what you all think a grail is. I am classifying this as a grail piece for my collection this week. There'll be a video on that hopefully later this week. And who knows what else. All I got for you, boys and girls. We'll catch you on the next one. Peace.